Yeah, hi, so it's Amanda and Georgia from PB here to talk to you about the latest issue of Professional Beauty. So this is our August issue. Um, can we just have some praise for the so cover? I love this cover. It's so so nice. beautiful. Look at that white eyeliner. Just oh, amazing. Um, yeah, so this should be landing with you guys quite soon, um, probably across this week. Some of you might already have it, which is great. Um, what I thought Georgia and I would do is just talk to you about a few of the pieces that are in there and the things that we think you know would be a good read for you this month. Yes. Um, you go first. So maybe, oh I'll start with a piece written by me. Um, so this month I have done a piece on how to make your salon or spa a dementia friendly business. Um, more people in the UK are suffering with the condition than ever before and actually those who are living with it find it quite difficult to go out and live a normal life and do the things that they used to do but actually the salon and spa environment can be such a calm like a calming and comforting place for them but it just means you have to slightly tweak your protocols or your experience for them and it's very very easy to do and actually in this issue it's called peace of mind um, I've outlined four things that you can do to actually make the process a lot nicer for them. I mean, it's not a case that they're going to be a massive clientele, but it's more a case of making sure that your therapists are prepared for when somebody like that comes in. And also I outlined some of the training that you can get which is free from like the Alzheimer's Society, which is definitely worth investing in. It's just one of those things that people just wouldn't, um, you just wouldn't consider normally, mm. that you would have to make a few adjustments, I guess. Yeah, I think it's... It's a bit like if you're off by cancer therapy, you know, it's not wildly different, but there's just a few small tweaks that you need to make. Yeah, and if you're someone who's always had treatments, you, why should you have to stop doing that? Because exactly. you're an illness. Yeah. So, yeah, that's for me. <laughs> I'm just trying to find something to switch about. Oh, this is, a, this good is a good one. Right. Yeah. So, we spoke to you fairly recently on one of these about. Um, issues surrounding topical anaesthetic and therapists applying topical, topical anaesthetic before um, needing treatments and it kind of extends into like microblading and some permanent makeup as well um, and I looked at it a bit more in depth in this issue we did a, a hot topic piece but a kind of a two page one um, because there was a lot to get in a lot of different voices and opinions and stuff um, I'm not going to go into it loads now because my brain is mush because of the heat and I'm going to say something wrong because it's really complicated, <laughs> but it's really interesting um, and it's something that we would like to keep hearing your opinions and your experiences on to kind of gain like a better picture of what's going on because I think it could potentially be the next thing um, yeah. that really starts to be targeted um, in the industry in terms of what therapists can and can't do and maybe adjusting the way that you do things, who you can treat and what treatments you can do mm. in that kind of never ending. Yeah, I think what I found interesting in reading it is that there's not like a one rule applies to all in no, the UK. Exactly. So it's all different depending on what council and what borough you're in. Um, so that's kind of scary as well. Well, it's crazy that some people in some parts of the country have been told they can't do it where, and others haven't. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's not equal, so it's, yeah. it's definitely worth reading and you know, looking into what your borough is saying. Yeah, and if you don't know, then maybe just check with your council to be on the safe side um, and whoever your supplier is for your needling equipment and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so that is an interesting one. We also have oh, a nice cool. nail trends feature for um, autumn winter. Um, so that's just rounding up all the colour collections from the pro nail brands, for the most of them. Um, and also I did a little Q&A with a couple of um, really good top session texts just about the trends and what colours they're tipping to be really big, mm. what services they're expected to be popular in salon. So that is a nice one. Yeah, some really nice colours actually coming out yeah. in autumn winter. And, and it's a bit some, weird to think about that. But, but some <laughs> like unexpected yeah. winter colours, which is nice. Yeah. And there's two um, really cool exclusive step by steps in here as yeah, well. Really nice. um, kind of different takes on winter floral trend. Um, yeah, that's one of the big trends. Yeah. Um, something else that I wrote this month um, was I looked into the rise of fitness residencies in spa. So with the wellness trend growing um, and kind of fitness, wellness, spa, all becoming this kind of one 360 degree offering to wellness, a lot more spas are investing in not just a gym, but actually like partnering with a fitness coach on a program that they can offer alongside treatments, alongside nutrition, um, to really aid treatment results 
it's quite interesting. Um, so in it, I've outlined four different places in the UK as far as like, doing stuff and this bit of the bill. It's definitely worth looking into it because I guess it's an easy way to upsell mm. and give your clients more and actually to help them get better results more quickly. I mean, yeah. And you don't need tons of space to have no. a fitness offer. You or can tailor of, it. Yeah, you don't need a lot of investment either. Some of these places will just have somebody come in a couple of times a year yeah. and do this program. So it's something a bit more exclusive as well. Another way of kind of getting customers to come to you for something that they can't get anywhere else. Um. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and hi, Keisha. <laughs> Um, sorry guys, just seeing the messages. It's quite hard to see because yeah, it's just so my hot eyes in this are really room. Bad as well. It's a bit misty and yeah. Um, okay, one more thing because my mm. face is getting way too shiny for this. Sorry guys, I'm um, <laughs> not dealing with the heat. Well. Is um, <laughs> oh, something else we've spoken about briefly before um, is robe sizing in spas and whether or not you are being inclusive and catering to all different types of clients or whether you might be unknowingly excluding um, clients of different sizes but by not offering, by offering like one robe size. Um, so we did a uniforms feature in this issue and I just did um, a quick little thing here um, talking to a few uniform brands about what they do in terms of what sizes they offer, um, mm. robe, robe and towel brands, sorry, what sizes they offer and whether or not they've seen an increase in demand for um, larger sizes. So that is something to think about if you um, have heat water facilities, make sure that you're offering sizes that you're not going to be excluding any clients and making anyone feel uncomfortable um, in your spa. Mm. So there's that as well. Yeah. But yeah, pretty much, not to blow our own trumpet, but it's a really good issue. Um, oh, it's a really good issue. But yeah, obviously we'd love to know what you're liking in the issue this month, what things should be great. You know, we love the debates you guys have on our social channels, so do post about it. Mm. Tell us your thoughts and, and you know, if, if you know we think they're really good, they'll go on our digital page that goes in every month where we round up some of the best debates, so it's yeah. definitely worth doing it. And tell us what you want us to cover as well. Yeah. But apart from that, we're going to go and get some water and cool down a bit because there's no air con in here. Um, but thanks so much for joining everybody and for all your comments and we'll see you next Thursday. Thanks, Thursday. everyone. Have a nice sunny Bye. day. Bye.